and we found something really, really, really neat that we want to show you real quick. Um, completely unexpected, but very <laughs> unusual. That's part of the reason I think why we kind of like poking around the desert is you never know what you're going to find. So let's go show you this weird thing in the middle of the desert. It's going to blow your mind because it's blowing <laughs> my mind to still wrap my head around what I'm looking at right here. <laughs> Are you ready? Are you ready for adventure? Welcome back to Candy Adventures. I'm Chris. And I'm Elizabeth. And we are in the beautiful desert of California today doing a little bit of boondocking. So today we're going to show you what it's like boondocking in a pop-up truck camper in the middle of nowhere. Last time we left you we were coming from Lake Isabella, California and we had a little uh, situation where we end up leaving the place we were in a little bit prematurely because uh, we had someone decide to come camp by us that was a little bit uh, uh, out there could have been having a little mental issue or there was legitimately some demons inside their van they were getting out <laughs> either way we didn't want those demons inside our van because the ritual would have caused them to hop vehicles because that's how <laughs> that works and I didn't want that to happen um, so we jumped about two hours yeah two two and a half hours yeah. down down the road through the desert just outside of Barstow we are in a huge BLM area that is an off-road mecca and we're going to show you our setup around this morning before we get our day started now it is a little chilly by uh, a little chilly it's 47 degrees with wind um, but it's not too bad in the desert once that sun pops out uh 47 is a lot warmer than east coast 47 uh, when there's no sun and uh, it's humid yeah first thing everybody wants to know is what do you do for power when you're boondocking um, inevitably you're gonna have to charge phones or cook or any of those things so we have two options for when we're boondocking the first is tucked back under here. This is our Van Powers battery bank. It's basically a Jackery, uh, just a different brand, but we can hook the camper directly into this battery bank. This battery bank has the option to charge off of 200 watt solar panels, which we do have, but it is really overcast today, so the amount of solar charging would be minimal, which is why we also have a Champion generator. This is one of the most quiet generators and has been super reliable. We've never had any issues with starting this thing and uh, it's flawless and we'll charge this battery bank up in just a couple hours. Uh, keeping warm because it's been very cold. Last night it got down to 30 degrees. This is an exhaust for our diesel heater and our diesel heater is super cool because we don't even need to hook up any of our power sources here because we have a, a deep cycle battery. We have one 12 volt deep cycle battery inside this that runs our house power and up on top of the roof there are two solar panels so there's a 100 watt solar panel there and a 100 watt solar panel there and uh, that one battery will run that diesel generator all night so we got here late last night we didn't have to set up any of this stuff it's super nice just to go in there and hook on your house power and be able to fire up your diesel heater and stay nice and warm when it's 30 degrees in the desert the other things that run off of um, just that battery and the solar panels on the camper are the lights and the exhaust fan inside. So you get the basics um, and then the 12 volt. We have one 12 volt charger port inside which you can charge phones without having to hook up to any of this stuff. Uh, before we left, we filled up our water tank. So we got 30 gallons here and on the front of the truck, we always have spare fuel. So if we wanna go exploring on the dirt bike, which is located over there on the back of that trailer of the Honda Ridgeline, we have five more gallons of diesel for our diesel heater and we have five gallons of gasoline if we want to run our dirt bike around and explore this area which i don't know why you wouldn't uh, there's so much to explore uh, that mona really over here is super enjoying this no people around for miles and she just gets to free roam and exercise herself which is nice and then we can upload videos out here uh, through our starlink which has a completely unobst unobstructed view right now uh, going up to space which is super awesome because we uploaded a video yesterday and we might do one more while we're out here because it is uh, so budget friendly being completely free. This Starlink runs off of that battery bank, but it's not connected directly to it. We actually have it plugged in <laughs> through this port right here. When we bought this camper, um, the previous owner tried to install this outdoor like 12 volt system and it doesn't work, but it's made a perfect circle to put wires in through the side. And your Starlink plug that goes has to go through this hole is a very big plug. So it's nice that there's this big like one inch diameter hole and that's why I haven't filled it. I'll need to get around to filling that soon 
uh, probably with the hot glue gun, just an excuse to use it. Uh, but that's our <laughs> current setup right now. The one thing we're really excited about right now is inside we have a hot shower. So I think we're gonna turn the hot water heater on. We'll show you how that works. So over here is our panels of stuff. So this is the diesel heater control system. And then this is the switch to turn on the propane water heater. So we'll just click on. And when that light goes off, it means it's on and I can hear it firing up and running, which will bring us to our shower. And you think, how do you shower in this tiny little truck camper? Here, let me show you for a reference how small this is. But there's pretty good headroom because the skylight yeah. gives you another four or five inches up there. Yep. And then, uh, yeah, this comes all the way around. It, it's, a, it's a bit claustrophobic. So you have to take, we leave our trash can inside here clipped over this door. So we have to remove our trash can. And yep. then you can see we have a full shower in here. So we'll, we'll show you that later, but the water heater is on, I believe it's a six gallon water heater and it actually lasts for both of our showers. Um, we don't take very long showers in here. So that's running off the propane unit. If it could run off diesel, that'd be cool, but I don't know how to switch that out. And then some questions that were asked in a previous video were, how do we run our fridge? Answer, we don't. If we have shore power, we'll have fresh meat and eggs and stuff, or uh, milk and stuff. But when we don't have shore power, this old three-way fridge, ours runs horribly off anything but shore power. DC is not even worth wasting your time. It has a gas setting, it'll run off propane. It works okay on that, but it kind of smokes through a lot of propane. And propane is definitely the hardest supply to refill. Uh, diesel's easy to find anywhere. Water, you can do a pretty good job of finding, but propane, you always have to find someone that can fill it or the employee has to be there or a uh, you know, very specific area. So we just turn it into storage. This is all just non-perishable storage, all just jammed in here right now. But when this thing is on shore power, whenever we get that opportunity, this actually, this refrigerator does work really, really well. I know some people have a problem with these because uh, these are not compressor refrigerators or refrigerators. Um, so as long as it's really level, the thing works awesome and, it, and the freezer works good and everything about it works good. But off offshore power, it is a pantry. Also, this is a baby safety cabinet thing because when we use this as a pantry, the door gets heavy and it falls open. <laughs> so that's on there. What we like about our soft sided truck camper, it gets a little colder at night for sure. But what we like about it during the day is that you create this greenhouse. You have windows all the way around and we keep these uh, plastic tinted shades shut, you know, to keep the wind out, but it lets enough sunlight in here where it warms up. So we shower, we're kind of waiting around for maybe another hour or so, and it gets nice and warm in here. So when we take a shower, it doesn't feel 47 degrees outside. So we fire up the diesel heater, get it nice and toasty, and then we'll take a shower when everything's nice and warm. And it's actually pretty pleasant. So before I shower, I'm gonna exercise real quick. And I'll show you the exercise setup we have going on out here. I hate crowded gyms. I hate workout classes and uh, I love space. So this is the most amazing gym I've had in a long time. So we have uh, some 20 pound dumbbells, some 45s, a seat uh, to do all your ab stuff or put your hands on if some of the rocks are kind of sharp. And we have some wedges. Of course I love wedges so uh, you can get full depth on things that maybe you don't have really good flexibility with. Uh, and then I have my push-up machine because we don't have access to a uh, you know, weight set. When you do push-ups, your body doesn't get a full stretch of your pec muscles. So I like using these, which is our loading ramp for the motorcycles, is you can go below the ground uh, on your push-up depth. And I love that. You can get a full stretch like you were doing a bench press. Your face just goes directly into the corner. <laughs> yeah. And then right beside our workout area, I want to show you something else super cool. And you're thinking, what are you doing, Dennis the Menace, with this in your hand? The slingshot. You can shoot on BLM land firearms or slingshots. And so I don't know if you can tell here, but people have left steel targets at different distances going up the hill here. And so I've been sitting out here this morning uh, waiting for someone else to wake up with my slingshot <laughs> and my ball bearings having a great time. Ting! That's a very satisfying sound <laughs> out here clinking the steel. I like carrying a slingshot in a truck camper in case there's like a, a pesky animal that you don't want to kill, but you just want to give it a little pop on the butt to let it know like, 
hey, stop coming around the camper. You know, if, if you got a coyote or, or some other animal that's sniffing around a little too close that you don't want to injure at all. Ting, nice. All right, I'm gonna put this stuff up and quit playing around and I'm gonna have my little workout so we can go ahead and start making breakfast and have a shower. Let's do another one. Some what? <laughs> what did you just say? Curls for the girls. Uh, so on this channel, we primarily focus on foods that are hot and brown. Everything we seem to make seems to be an amalgamation of just hot brown mush or hot brown crispy mush. So I'm gonna do double the oats to the protein powder. Now I'm just gonna add a little water. I wanna keep it almost like a dough and I'm gonna fry it and make like little cakes. It's gonna be my goal is, is to make like little ration cakes. To put a little flavor in it, I'm gonna be using our date syrup and then a little bit of cinnamon to help out with the overall brownness of our hot brown. Yeah, our coconut oil got a little, uh, little hard, so I'm cutting it out with a butter knife. It smells amazing in here. I know you guys can't smell it, but this almost smells like walking around the food court in the mall with like a blend of like Cinnabon and, and the nuts, the anti nuts. M's and the, the roasted nuts. nuts. <laughs> kind of smells like that vibe. So put yourself in the food court and that's what it smells like in here. Also from Grocery Outlet is whipped honey. It's a uh, maple syrup and honey whipped together. This stuff is super good. I'm gonna drizzle just a little bit on here just to give it a little sweet. Hot brown going down. Ooh, that honey actually, I think made it really good. That's actually really good. I thought it was gonna be kind of, I don't know, protein. I feel like protein snacks and stuff can disappoint sometimes. Like they're kind of bland or I just don't really like the taste of protein sometimes. But uh, like like the whey protein, but this is actually really good. That'll be a pretty heavy meal. We got two each and then we got some left over in here. Um, so that'll be a pretty heavy meal that'll get us through the rest of the day. We only eat once or twice a day uh, when we're living like this, so. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully the audio is okay. Our diesel heater is fired up and I, I crank it on high when I take a shower. Um, because it is like 49 degrees outside, and of course we're in a soft-sided truck camper, so it's nice to have as much warmth in here as possible because when you shower in our little shower, um, you know, you're off-grid, you know, we only have 30 gallons, so you don't just leave the water running the whole time. The other thing that's nice about having the diesel heater running is it dumps straight onto the floor in front of the shower, so when you step out of the shower here, um, your feet are gonna be a little bit wet still. So it's nice when that is there because that immediately dries up any water that is going to splatter onto the ground as you're dripping and still a little bit wet and you can see we have a leak here um, that's something i gotta fix the leak doesn't go anywhere it just drains into the drain it doesn't actually hurt anything but it is annoying and then uh, crack the cold a little bit and then once i get going i just turn this on and i use that to shower and then i cut it off here and then get wet and then cut it on here. Wow, chicka, wow, wow. The other nice thing is if it starts getting too foggy, you can reach over here and turn on your exhaust fan. So all the steam gets sucked out, which is super nice. The soap we use is the cheapest soap you can buy by volume. And I love it. Uh, of course it's mane and tail because the dog uses it, we use it. It's shampoo, it's face wash, it's body wash. And it's one of the few that's not owned by a conglomerate. Yep, this is still its own company. This is not owned by Nabisco or Nestle or uh, Procter & Gamble. It's still its own thing. So we like to support things that are still their own thing and not owned by a giant conglomeration. Yep. And it's cheap. So mane and tail for everything. You make the shower look so tiny. <laughs> but I still have, I still have that much room above my head. But as soon as you wrap that plastic around. Yeah, this is where it gets awful. So when you get in here and start showering, <laughs> The shower curtain is the real detriment, but because it's cold outside, we don't use the external shower. Um, so the shower curtain has to go around because the door is not waterproof. Yeah, the door is really where it splashes. Because you're spraying it on yourself, you really don't get too much out this direction. Um, but that's pretty much it. So that sound is the water pump once it's actually pumping water. Is it hot? <laughs> Way hot. Now I get my mane and tail. Get a good gloop. <laughs> That's pretty much it. 
you don't get to see the rest. It is a very confined space in there, so we like to give each other a little bit of privacy instead of listening to and watching someone take a shower. Uh, it gives you the opportunity to kind of enjoy just a little bit of hot water and relaxation and scrub all the bits you need to scrub without anybody else just kind of lurking there. Um, so we like to give each other space and then you just kind of transform into a clean human and brush your teeth and do all that shenanigans in there because Unlike larger campers, there's no door or separation between like the bedroom or the bathroom. That includes the dog. She's a nosy little Nelly sometimes, so <laughs> she's also out of the camper for the transformation cleansing process. Now the real hack here, especially for females or men with a lot of hair, is that this diesel heater actually um seconds as a blow dryer and it works really 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 well and we're not using hardly any electricity except for just a little bit that the diesel pump needs hair dryers and straighteners can be pretty power hungry they use a lot of electricity whereas this diesel pump uses hardly any and voila easy breezy beautiful and dry. All right, we're showered up and feeling uh, super anti-proletariat because we, we spent a little extra water and we washed our hair, <laughs> which is super nice. And the sun decided it came out, so maybe it was a good thing we washed our hair. And what I think we're gonna do is hop on the CRF. And before any of you safety Nazi get, get, gets on us, yes, I am going to be wearing this helmet, which is not technically a motorcycle helmet, it is an e-bike helmet. Um, but it is rated to 28 miles an hour and we are not going to get anywhere near 28 miles an hour today on this loose gravelly surface with two two people two, two riders yeah and uh, this is going to be kind of like a trials helmet it's meant for more slow speeds it's meant for e-bikes looks like mexico and breaking bad in these they're yellow tinted for nighttime skiing and everything looks sepia tinted now yeah it looks like we're in mexico 100 percent feels like i'm in breaking bad <laughs> usa Mexico, <laughs> USA, Mexico. I was only 17, but I thought that I knew more than I do now. Well. Ow. All right, so that was a pretty fun little uh, gallivant through the desert that we just had. And we found something really, really, really neat that we want to show you real quick. Completely unexpected, but <laughs> very unusual. That's part of the reason I think why we Kind of like poking around the desert. You never know what you're going to find. So let's go show you this weird thing in the middle of the desert. It's going to blow your mind because it's blowing <laughs> my mind to still wrap my head around what I'm looking at right here. <laughs> we saw some cattle in the distance and then we kept riding and then we found this. Um, Looks like a water trough area. And it says it's Department of the Interior Bureau of Land Management sign on it. Um, so then we came in here to check it out. And we found this empty water trough. What well, looks like an empty water trough. It just looks like a, a breeding area for bees. All the bees in the desert have found it. And that's pretty cool, right? No, no, it gets cooler. Tucked back in here, in the little bit of water that is left, is goldfish. Can you see that on the camera? There's like three or four goldfish back here, and they're alive. Um, There is a, trick, a trickle of water coming from this like toilet bowl valve and there are goldfish out here. That is the craziest thing I've ever stumbled across in the desert is living goldfish. <laughs> I was first just uh, in awe of the bees because I'm always fascinated. How do bees find water in the desert? And if you can just pour out a little water and all of a sudden bees will show up. Don't know how they do that. So I was just marveling at all the bees here. 
and then we found the goldfish down there. Just like a little orange blob, and there's maybe like four or five of them just kind of propped up in the corner there. So I don't know how they got here, but they're here. I can't tell if this is private property or not. Um, I don't know if it's like a land use deal because there's signs on it for BLM, BLM. on the little kind of fence corral area. Yeah. Um, but then I, it looks like on Onyx it might be private property, so I'm not going to touch any of this stuff. No, it's not ours. Because the water's trickling, but there is a spring head over here um, that looks like you could hook this valve right here to uh, and turn that on. And there's even hosing laying around, this black hosing that's not hooked to anything. And it looks like you could add some more water to this uh, for the cattle and for the goldfish. I'm not going to touch it. It's, it's not mine. Yeah, it's not ours. If we break anything, it's not ours. Yeah, it's it's not my place to touch it. But yeah, if, uh, very fascinating, though. We've just found goldfish in the desert. So <laughs> always fun looking around the desert because you never know what you're going to stumble across. So cool. Just live little goldfish down there. I guess we're going to continue riding and see if there's anything else. But otherwise, it's very awesome desert expanse. Uh, while you ride and it's it's very peaceful. There's no one else out here except for the two trucks that we drove by that looked like they were working on like gas line stuff. Well I could say you didn't warn me this city life's a hard road to hold Woo! Ain't it funny how dreams turn around where corn don't grow Hard times are real there's dusty fields no matter where you go. Yeah. Some you may change your mind because the weeds are high where corn don't grow. No! Why? So we just stopped to put the camera up and I just saw the creepiest thing I've seen in a while. Again, you never know what you're going to find in the desert. Or some hills have eyes stuff. No! Let's see if Mona's doing anything fun. Mona? Oh, hi, good gear. Oh, hi. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh my gosh. How do you exercise your dog? All right, that was a super fun ride. And uh, now Mona's got her exercise and we found goldfish in the desert, which has uh, got me like anybody would uh, seeing some fish in the desert, hankering for some seafood. And so I think what we're gonna do out here in the desert is make some crab cakes. So we have this uh, bumblebee canned crab meat. And we got some little box of Jiffy Mix, uh, salsa de jalapeno, which kind of fits the you know desert southwest area. And then we also have some hominy. We got some swollen corn here that we're gonna mix in. And then we're gonna church it up with a little smoked papri paprika and some ground black pepper, and then some Everglades seasoning that my grandmother gave me while we were in Florida. She said she'd never use it and we've been hammering it. Uh, so this is just gonna be like all our salt and uh, I think it also has MSG in it. Yep, MSG, that is the best ingredient on planet Earth. You can fight me or not, uh, but that is the best ingredient you can add to anything. All right, now for our last can, our uh, jalapeno salsa. You translated that Spanish so fast. Yeah, I don't have to think about it. I went to Mexico one time, so <laughs> it's just up here. Oh, I thought it was going to be green. I did too. Everything's a surprise today. Now, if you're going to make crab cakes, you need to use uh, this much pepper. Any more or less, and it's not going to come out right. <laughs> Has to be this much. If it's any more or any less, it ain't going to work. I promise it won't work. All right, so it's a little too soupy. 
I think. So uh, nothing a little old Mountain Harvest mashed potatoes can't fix. Again, these were under a dollar. Use that like a sponge to absorb some of the moisture. All right, that's starting to get pretty thick. There you go. That'll work. I've had this since I was probably 10 years old, this old East Wing hatchet. Um, and it's starting to crack a little bit. I probably should coat that in some, some kind of lacquer or something again, that leather handle. But I've had this since I was 10 years old, which is uh, more than 15 years ago. Does that look like a lot of fun? Mm -hmm. It seems like a whole lot of fun, doesn't it? There's a whole pile of fun here to be had, but nobody's letting you do it. <laughs> You're gonna get burned. Okay, but look, if I could just... <laughs> Why is that, you see all, look, hey, look out, look out. You have the whole world of sticks out there. You see them? <laughs> Anywhere out there, you can have sticks. There's so many. Limitless. Oh, where are you going? Is it? <laughs> Since she was a puppy, she's done this. Take Goodbye. Firewood. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> A lot easier to control your temperature with propane or electricity, but this is more fun and a lot more cost effective. There we go. It's cooking. We're ready. Are you making like crab cake pancake? Yeah. Again, it looks like a state fair food. We got our hot brown on a paper plate over a wood fire. <laughs> and the, the place that you probably would least think about eating some crab cakes in the whole world out here in the desert. Let's see how they taste. Sauce, some salsa de jalapeno. You know, it's funny. We carry around so much stuff because we do so many things except for chairs. Chairs are for the weak and the timid. <laughs> And the French. <laughs> but I would like to have one. Yeah, a chair. Solid. The fire makes it really um, like toasty tasting if toasty is a flavor profile. Smoky is. Yeah. Smoky and toasted. Damn, that's good. Hot brown for the win. All right, I think that's going to do it for today on our video. We're going to keep enjoying our crab cakes and watch this sunset with literally no one around, uh, which is my happy place. <laughs> Just nobody around. We haven't seen another person in... Three or four days yeah, now? Yeah, it's been a long time. There was some off-roaders that first drove by the first night we got here and the first morning, and that was it. And yep. we haven't seen anyone. So super awesome spot. And we'll see you guys next video. Hard times are real, there's dusty fields, no matter where you go. Yeah. Some of you may change your mind, cause the weeds are high, where corn don't grow. Some of you may change your mind.